Hey friends, in today's video I want to talk about my thoughts on the Guardian games. A lot of you probably clicked on the vid just to hear the recommendation on the new submachine gun that appears. So I think we start with that. But real quickly, pause and read if you want to see the splash screen for when you first boot up Destiny 2 for the Guardian games week. Or I don't know exactly how long it lasts, I probably should have looked that up. Anyhow, SMG. It has a unique trait perk called Classy Contender which final blows with this weapon grant class ability energy. Sounds incredible on the surface to realize it's not that much of a bonus and you're probably better off going hockey breach armaments because that's bonus damage to barricades and that happens way more than I actually get kills in PvP. I have to kill the barricade or break the barricade to even get a kill in the first place so I probably want to run that. That's the most unique thing it does I guess compared to other SMGs though. In a way, you almost get some class energy ability back on Hunter if you just simply had the killing wind perk on an SMG, assuming you're not already running 10 mobility. But if you are running 10 mobility, you will get some mileage out of Classic Contender and that's worth considering when there are not Titans on the field. So what I guess you could do is if you're not playing against a Stasis or a Titan team, it's just switch it to Classic Contender and don't overthink it. If you also had armor piercing rounds in the magazine slot, it would do more damage to barricade, so that is something ultra unique that this SMG offers. And beyond that, I would say that its competitors being Shayra's Wrath, Funnel Web, and Aikilas SMG, they all do better unique things than the title beyond the barricade breaking. I will show you on screen what the D2 Gunsmith rolls of title looks like real quick, booting it up. Probably should have had that up immediately. Probably, yeah, I had a tab earlier, but it got lost somehow. Here we are. If I had to make a PvP roll right now, this would be the Barricade Breaker setup. There's going to be a new damage falloff calculation next season. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's going to be fairly similar. It tries to push up the lower zooms and pull down the higher zooms and make them a little closer together. The title is a 15 zoom, whereas Aikilos SMG is a 14 zoom. However, Aikilos SMG has the Seraph round perk in the magazine, which does give it a 10% bonus to damage falloff for some reason. And when you compare it apples to apples, it's pretty damn close in the damage falloff. So that is worth considering. And you can get almost an identical role of Threat Detector Surrounded. The only difference is you don't have Hake Breach Armament. So if you're trying to make a Barricade Breaker, just go for the title if possible. Yes, there's this element of FOMO or fear of missing out this week for trying to break your back and get a title before it goes away for a year, but I wouldn't lose sleep over it because compared to other SMGs, it's good not great unless you're going for that hyper-specific role. In PvE, I think you just go, don't overthink it, perpetual motion one for all. Maybe you go Vorpal Weapon, try to keep the armor piercing there to deal with barrier champs in future seasons. For PvP-specific roles... Threat Detector or DSR or Hip Fire, maybe Perpetual Motion. And then the perk you go for is maybe Swashbuckler or Moving Target, which is the sheer uptime of those two perks. It's worth mentioning that Vorpal Weapon on the Aggressive Frame is one of the best time to kills for specifically deleting supers. But just know that you can also get the Aikilos SMG within a three week cycle. It's every week there is a different drop table. And on one of those three weeks, it's Aikilos SMG. So every three weeks, you can get an Aikilos SMG. Just know that. So if you're watching this video a few months from now and really wanted a title SMG, just go get an Aikilos. It does fairly similar things, and I honestly like it better. So I'm just going to do that. Aikilos SMG also has Disruption Break, which is a perk that I value for double primary setups, which is typically what I use an SMG for. Sierra's Wrath also holds its own a lot better when pairing a special weapon with an SMG since Shayra's can almost touch 30 meters and go beyond it with certain perk setups. So that being said, the TLDR on this video is if you're going for the title, don't break her back over it. Try to look for something unique that it offers, and if you get it, good, and if not, you can delete it and not lose sleep over it because you'll probably get a funnel web just from world drops. You'll just play the game and stumble upon a better funnel web eventually. So let's talk about the Guardian games now. The theme of it has always been to pit the three classes against each other, Hunter, Titan, Warlock. And while I'm playing a Hunter in the background and doing Lost Sectors in the background for Medallions, that does not mean that I like Hunters more than the other two. It just means that I needed to farm for some exotic boots today and thought it was a perfect opportunity to consolidate my time. I 
think I should commentate a run of this Lost Sector, so let me quickly go through the Guardian game's thoughts, and then I'll do a perfect run of this Chamber of Starlight. So, thoughts. I don't really care about the pitting the classes against each other, because I don't like or dislike any of the classes more than each other. Sure, that changes depending on the current season, like whenever Titans have One-Eyed Mask or Lorelei Splendor, I hate them more than the other two classes, and for that reason alone, I don't want Titans to win. Warlocks and Hunters are not innocent though, because they both house maybe the most popular PvP classes in the game, being the Stompy Hunter and the Top Tree Dawnblade, which in general, I'm making a generalization here, they're usually the ones to start acting toxic first in a game beyond just emoting and bagging. They will throw, shoot bodies, uh, grief, that type of thing, leave the match early, all because they're just not enjoying what's happening in the game, and more power to them. But for those reasons, you can paint a negative light if you look hard enough. For any of the three classes, I don't have favoritism. Now, when it comes to what I personally like to play, I usually forego uh, playing what I like to play so that I have a well-rounded team. If we're talking a team of three, Titans are very rare to have a competent Titan player on a team, even though, in my opinion, it creates one of the most well-rounded teams. So let me paint the picture for you. If you run a triple hunter setup, three invis hunters, it's good, but eventually you're going to run into any amount of bubble titans or top tree dawn blades, and you're not going to have a great answer to that. When the bubbles come up, you're what are you going to do? Shoot a tether at them? What are you going to do? Use the spectral blades that hasn't charged yet? You just have a straight counter to your setup. So for that reason, I like to mix the three together to try to handle anything the game throws at me. So again, typically if my teammates play Hunter and Warlock, that forces me on Titan, although I won't say that Titan is my favorite. If you held a last word to my head and told me to win a tournament tomorrow, I'm showing up with Shademinder most likely, if I don't know who my teammates are, or can't trust my teammates for whatever reason. I think Shademinder at the current moment is the Swiss Army Knife of Destiny, and I would say that I would prefer my Hunter with Gemini Jester simply for radar manipulation, if not for the recent TWAB that has thrown a complete wrench into build crafting with the Hunter. Now what changed in that TWAB is they made the resilience stat useful, so the higher your resilience, the more flinch resistance you get, which means that since I'm a primary centric player, I almost have to go for all resilience just to send a message to the enemy team saying I value consistency on my primary, maybe you should too. And as a result, that throws a wrench in the fact that mobility is important and recovery is important to a hunter. So how the hell am I going to fit 10 resilience on it? The answer is, it's very specific and I have to farm out an entirely new armor set. There are ways to do it. Like on Night Stalker, I'm going to forego a little bit of mobility and it's going to end up being 6, 10, 10 with moderate stat splits here. And believe it or not, I'm going high into strength on my stompies just so that I can do this. Get back to the ground a little bit sooner. And that Shatter Smoke does damage to the enemy team. So it's a match made in heaven to mitigating the future negative aerial effectiveness penalty of Stompies. And it's a very smart build. So yeah, I'm going to run that. Also, if you think about it, if mobility means your jump is closer to the floor and Stompies have a jump penalty, then I kind of want to be closer to the floor anyway. I'll forego a little bit of dodge and maybe I'll get it back in a new way, like with bolstering detonation or with the killing wind perk on some of my weapons. I don't even know if I have one right now that has it. I do have a bow with killing wind, and it's worth mentioning that bows on Hunter are especially useful because on Hunter, if you use your jump ability, you don't have to redraw the bowstring like you would on Titan or Warlock outside of Lion Rampant and Top Tree Dawnblade. So yeah. Hunter plus a bow, really good, and bows weren't mentioned in the TWAB for being excessively powerful, and I do think they're the best primary in the game, so I'm going to use more bows in the future. Of course, a bow doesn't always synergize exactly with what the team's running, so sometimes I put away the bow, but most of the time when I'm solo, bow is the play. So yeah, that was a mouthful to basically say. I show no allegiance to any class, I play what the best option is for the team, and at the current moment, the Swiss Army Knife of Destiny 2 is the Shade Binder, though I slowly see my Hunter and Titan having builds that can rival it, 
And once that happens, I'm probably just going to flip a three-sided coin before I play Destiny 2, or just whatever strikes my fancy that day and play. So therefore, the theme of Guardian Games, which is class warfare, doesn't appeal to me at all. What Guardian Games brings to the table is spicier PvE, then I would argue should just be a normal part of the game or perhaps a normal option. If they want to bring something new with Guardian Games, it should have been in PvP. Should have been an extra playlist in lieu of momentum control. I know some people like momentum, but bring an extra playlist that is multi-team. And to queue into multi-team, if you queue a Titan, it is going to randomly matchmake you with two other Titans. That's your team. And you're going to be playing against the other classes. You're going to be playing three Titans versus three Warlocks versus three Hunters. You can queue in with your team of three, but you have to be on the same class in order to queue. I don't know if it's going to be an objective, but I strongly recommend if Bungie does something similar in the future, that they stick to a very small map pool or even just one single map. That way it can be explicitly curated to make multi-team feel fun and engaging. Past that, let's uh, run some Lost Sectors. Those are my thoughts, so if somebody asked in the Twitch chat, I probably sent you the link to this video. This is the Chamber of Starlight Lost Sector. By the time you see this video, this one's probably going to be gone, but just know for future rotations that this one is fast. It's fast as like 30 to 40 seconds. I'm going to preface exactly what's about to go down here because it is a lot of talking. Lightweight blinding grenade launcher just for movement speed and really nothing else. I will blind some enemies with it if I mess up, but if I don't mess up, I don't have to do it at all. I use my Shatter Smoke for a long invis to avoid most of the first enemies, and then Marksman's Dodge to act as the second invis way later. I have Orb Pickup for Devour, which helps survivability, as well as Fireteam Medic for Warmind Cells to also heal me if I need it in a pinch. Wrath of Rasputin can create a Warmind Cell off of my Gallarhorn. I also have Overload Grenades in the event that something messes up, Though I will say, if you mess up, it is almost faster to reset than to just finish the run, and I might mess up this first one, just because I might be a little rusty here. Double Rocket Reserve with Blast Radius for multi-kills that create an Orb of Light with Siphon. Charge me with Light, and then High Energy Fire gives me bonus Galahorn damage, which does help one-shot champions. Then I have Stacks on Stacks to help maintain more charge with Light. The unstoppable hand cannon is what stops the champion, and rocket reloader is necessary for finishing a reload before my jump lands me on the floor. So let's start. I want to keep the tube out when I start my jump, and then queue up an unstoppable round while walking backwards. I want to shoot two rockets at the champion, and then uh, shatter smoke down to proc invis, then pull out my tube, start a jump, and instantly reload the rocket. So let's uh, see if that happens, just like the coach wrote it up. Tube out. Stay a little bit away from the slanted wall because I don't want my head to bust it. Tube out again. Gonna do some very, very light parkour here just to avoid clambering. Queue up the gun again. Unstop. Hit fire to not hit an acolyte, perhaps. Reload. Break the shield of the wizard. Unstop in, avoid acolytes, splash the wizard, get my health back, finish these reloads. Marksman's dodge about to go huge here. And now I want to jump over the knight and pop the overload um, twice. And that should finish it. And there we go. Platinum in how many seconds was that? Please, just let me see the time. 40 seconds. So just like the coach wrote it up. And like I said, if you mess up here... Expect to add an extra minute to just messing up. So if you feel like it's more fun to speed run, just reset and go again. And if you really just want the loot, just finish it. It's going to be about the same time, which is why I recommend you bring Overload Grenade, just in case you fuck up. Okay, I think that's the video. So let me know down in the comment section if you can think of something that the title does uniquely that I maybe didn't mention in this video. Sell me on this weapon and why it's the best. And then sell me on why you like Guardian Games and or why you like your class the best. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. And I guess if Bungie watches this video, tell them what they can do to make Guardian Games more appealing in the future. Because 
All of the iterations of Guardian games did not appeal to me just from the theme alone, let alone the in-game activities. I might be streaming on Twitch, I might not be. Maybe I run more Lost Sectors. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks again, everybody.